Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the TechTik YouTube channel. After taking a look at MSI's and Astrox's new KB Lake Z270 chipset based motherboards, today I'll be checking out Gigabyte's Aura series and their Z270X Gaming 5 model. As you can probably notice, there isn't any big Gigabyte logo on the box, and what they did here is actually put themselves in a second plan while giving more attention to the Oros brand, which comes in as a representative of their more, so to speak, higher-end premium models of KB Lake motherboards. As some of you may know, this Oros sub-brand isn't a new thing. Gigabyte has a lineup of their gaming notebooks, graphics cards, and gaming peripherals under this brand for quite some time now, so it seems like they've decided to place some motherboards under that same wing. Of course, beside it, and in terms of other KB Lake chipset-based motherboards in their lineup, you can also choose other models from their regular gaming and ultra-durable series. On the front you won't find anything too interesting except the model name and a short mention of few main features, which expand into details on the back side of the box. Here you can see a bunch of different features laid out, like the RGB support, killer nick, latest Realtek audio chipset, M.2 NVMe support together with U.2 connector and so on, alongside of your standard technical specifications, an I.O. layout and a small picture of the motherboard in the right top corner. Opening up the box, here we have your usual pile of user manuals and optical disk with drivers and software, 4 SATA cables, adapter cable for LED strip, Oros badge sticker, front panel adapter G connector for easier cable installation and an IO shield. And here we have the motherboard itself. I really like how Gigabyte went with a bit more cleaner looking design and color scheme, using only black and white colors with some silver accents on the passive heatsinks around the sockets for the power design and the chipset, while I also like how they did this cool and almost seamless transition from the heatsink to the iOS plastic cover. Beside that, the other most eye-catching detail are these chrome-like slots for the RAM and PCI Express slots. That's actually stainless steel armor which reinforces those slots using more sturdy their construction with addition of extra anchor points, preventing their bending or damaging. All in all, we got ourselves one pretty good looking motherboard with excellent build quality. Speaking of the PCI Express slots, you can see that we have a total of 6 of them, 3 PCI Express X1 3.0 and 3 PCI Express X16 3.0 slots, with their electrical configuration of X16, X8, X4 from top to bottom. In terms of doing a multi-GPU configuration with them, that's up to 2-way X8, X8 for NVIDIA's SLI and up to 3-way X8, X8, X4 for AMD's Crossfire. For storage options, Gigabyte really went all in with this model. Here you can see three SATA Express connectors consisting out of six SATA 3 ports. Left of that you can see one U.2 connector and as a final cherry on the top, of course Ultra M.2 module support, two of them to be exact, one in line with the first PCI Express X1 slot and one on the bottom, which is turning out to be a pretty usual placement. In terms of other more non-standard features, so to speak, this model has a dedicated physical button for OC and Echo mode at the top right corner. On the bottom you will find a debug LED screen alongside of the agnostic LEDs right next to it, which is an always welcome add-on, although I wish they've put a power on and reset switch together with them. Being a model coming from Aura series, this motherboard is swamped with RGB LEDs, starting from the PCI Express slots and even the RAM slots, around the audio circuitry, socket and chipset skits, while the most noticeable one is definitely this transparent strip with engraved details, which then bounces the light off in a cool manner and which you can actually swap for something of your own. When it comes to overclocking, you'll be set with 12-phase digital power design, turbo B-clock tuning IC for greater base clock range, alongside of upgraded solid black capacitors and gold-plated socket, while 4 DDR4 RAM slots support memory of speeds up to 4133 MHz using XMP profile, or even beyond that, depending on the manufacturer, with over 1000 DDR4 modules already validated up until now. Speaking of the upgraded components, the audio circuitry on the left carries a brand new 
Realtek LC 1220 codec and which goes hand in hand in combination with Creative Labs X5 MB5 software suit. You can also spot Nishikon audio grade fine gold capacitors and smart headphone amp on board as well as an MEI shielding and an OP amp which can be swapped. So many P's. For your usual connectors and headers, we have a 24-pin ATX and 8-pin EPS power connectors, a total of 5 4-pin PWM fan headers, 2 USB 3.0 and 2 USB 2.0 headers, audio header, TPM header, 12-volt RGB WLED header and of course a front panel header for the chassis. Lastly, for iOS we have a pretty decent and more or less common array of ones, although I would like to see more USB 3.0 ports instead of these USB 2.0 ports, but on the other hand you'll get one USB 3.1 Type-A and one USB 3.1 Type-C port, alongside of HDMI and DisplayPort video outputs, gold-plated audio connectors for less interference, and two gigabit LAN ports, one of which is the Killer's E2500 NIC, which should together with their software suit in theory improve your network performance in terms of latency in games. That's it guys for this time from me, thank you once again for checking out the unboxing and preview of Gigabyte's Aorus Z270X Gaming 5 motherboard. Feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you like this video, it helps me a lot, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the product, and of course if you would like to see more content like this you can subscribe to the Tactic YouTube channel, or you can just check out some of my other videos from before.